Is there a question in the house? <laughs> yes. I read in a bit today about the two versions of the film. One, I think, four minutes longer than the other. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure which one we'd just seen. Uh, and if you knew which were the four minutes could turn. Well, that is the film that went out. I shot a scene where they went on a picnic in the countryside, That's you remember? Right, yeah. And that was like 44 minutes. But that was, <laughs> that was uh, we shot that, and, and that came out of the film. But I can't, I don't know, because I only remember the film as this. I don't think I've ever seen a version. I don't have a memory of another version. another version which has that scene in, although in the editing, it would have been there at some time. The article I read suggested that in Los Angeles they found the longer. I don't know. This was a film that I can't. <coughs> film that went out. Do you want to make use of this? Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, <not immediately. laughs> uh, so I have never seen another version of this film, and uh, maybe it exists, but I don't. I, I don't think so. The only way I can understand that is that they shoot which would have lasted cut version four minutes and maybe somebody thought it was in there but it wasn't. So. Mm. Anyway. You have to wait for the actor's cut. <laughs> oh yes, there's that to be several hours. <laughs> I want to ask something about the wall painting. It's not a fresco, is it? No. What is it? It's not a fresco, <laughs> the wall painting. I, I, I have part of it in the house. Uh, the, the part with the, with the, the falling man. The falling man. That was the title we were, when we made yeah. the film, incidentally. Yeah, that's well, right. one of the lessons I learned, I had to learn it again when we made Circle of Friends that both Pat and Colin were involved in, that if you make a film of a novel, the title of the film is the title of the novel, because the film sells the novel and the novel sells the film. But I was obsessed with calling it The Falling Man. Colin's quite right. Yeah. But, um, I think most of us, yeah, we none of us really wanted the title. It was uh, J.L. Carr who wrote... Yeah. We begged him. It was a beautiful novel. It, it, yeah. As someone pointed out uh, once in a review, that it reminds one of a, of, of a Chekhov short story. I mean, yeah. I think it's a, yeah. well, pretty well of that standard. Yeah. Um, but he was, and he was a fascinating, incredibly bright, interesting, eccentric man, but unbelievably stubborn. Yep. <laughs> and there was absolutely no way was he He said, do you think of a better title? You can have it. And we thought, well, it's a month in the country. I mean, we, I didn't think it's very good. And it, it's the title of a Turgenev play. And it's a much better title for that. And everyone kept thinking we were doing that. And then there was the other, uh, quite important, but even if slightly prosaic reason, which is that it, it's not a month. I mean, it takes, these people heal over a, a long summer, not, you know, it, it, it shouldn't be a four-week stint. Yeah. And, um, and we just thought it was a bit tedious. And it was at a time when um, there were a, a few, should we say, rather pastoral uh, period pieces around that I, I don't I don't think this really quite fitted into that category and I think a title can, can determine the way <laughs> well, yes, of looking. We all wanted the, the title to be The Falling, falling Man. Man but, I mean I remember having <clears throat> very strong conversations with Mr. Carr but <laughs> I was totally out of his league. He was, <laughs> he was one tough guy. Mm. But commercially he was right because the, you know, the, the, the book was, was a blockbuster. Yeah. Oh, it was. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it ran, that film ran in different cinemas in the West End for almost six months when it came out. Can you imagine that happening today? Mm. Yeah. Almost six months. <laughs> one more question. Or not. <laughs> Roly Lee. Did Simon turn up on set? No. Not at all? Did he ever come? No. no. No, there's no need. <laughs> <laughs> Pat explained quietly to Simon there was no need. <laughs> um, no, I never met him until until afterwards when um, he was uh, he uh, expressed you know great great delight in in, in the result. But, uh, uh, he was a delight to work with because we wor worked on the script in my humble flat in Elgin Crescent, and he used to come over and he was. He was brilliant. He was brilliant. Ken is the person actually who understood Simon Gray's work as a producer in the BBC more than anybody else, I think. Yeah. I mean, when, when needed, Simon would come to the set. And if any of you come, as I hope all, you all will, 
to the screening of After Pilkington on March 30th. I will tell you the story about Simon being on set for, for that film. Um, but as Pat says, he didn't come unless he was needed. And he only directed reluctantly in the theatre when there were, he couldn't find anyone better or when Harold Pinter wasn't available. <laughs> Well, uh, one hand, yes, your hand. Yeah, I would ask to disclose what the budget was for the film. I remember, it was a million, a million pounds. <coughs> yes, it was about and a million. And a 31-day shoot. Yeah. Euro hadn't been invented. No, 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 no. no, no. no. Well, we've got one last favour to ask Colin, which is that he, he, he just has to win the Oscar, because I think if he wins the Oscar, then probably the DVD, which Glyn Watkins has so fought for in this country, will may, may well have to be reissued. Uh, and so that if you wouldn't mind, Colin, just sort of that. Um, in the meantime, let me just offer a quick, a quick trailer. March the 9th, we meet again here for Simon Gray Part 2. A wonderful, wonderful award-winning film called Running Late, starring Peter Bowles and directed by Udayan Prasad. Peter Bowles and Udayan will both be here. It is one of the most wonderful television films ever made. It won the San Francisco uh, Film Festival Prize and so forth. That is part two. Part three, as Kenneth has just trailed, is after Pilkington on March the 30th, when Kenneth will be here with Christopher Morahan. Uh, there are tickets, a few tickets left for both of those evenings. In the meantime, before we go and eat, I must thank Odin, Mark and Stuart and the rest of their team, the Café Anglais team. I believe that and hope that this is the first of many such evenings where we can really relish wonderful filmmaking and then go and have a fantastic meal. So thank you very much. Please come and eat. <laughs>